So, first of all, okay, ladies and gentlemen. So, let's share my screen. Okay, I hope you can see. And yes, today I will talk about domain storytelling. Uh, it's a not very new tool, but it's a new approach for uh, decomposing the uh, complex domains. It's very interesting because yes, you can use event storming approach. Okay, but this is a very new approach, and. In this presentation, we will use domain storytelling, but first I will explain you what is the domain storytelling means and what's the difference between the current uh, approaches. And after that, we just jump to Kanban and then jump to event sourcing and then jump to macro services. So it's a very interesting presentation. I hope you will find it. That's very interesting. So first, I let me in, introduce myself. Uh, my name is Altu Bilgin Altuntaş. I'm Jack leader of Istanbul, uh, Jack Istanbul, and also I'm co-founder. So yes, uh, also I'm a Java developer since uh, 2000. So I'm quite old. <laughs> And yes, let's start. Domain storytelling. What is domain storytelling? Domain storytelling is a tool to discover the domain with the or domain expert. So it's very important to understand the domain deeply. So yeah, first we have to start from understanding the customer. So understand the domain after we have to start coding. So First, we have to understand the needs to take that the technology will come. So in that perspective, this tool, this approach is very helpful. So let me explain. So why it is useful? Because to in order to learn a domain language, so you can use it. So to record domain stories told by domain experts in a pictographical way, you can use it. I will show a small application uh, for you. Also, domain experts can see and they immediately give feedback about this, uh, your understanding. So the feedback mechanism is very important. So because it, it is pictographical, it is uh, visual, so you can just interact with the domain experts. Okay, so... Uh, for this, is what is the meaning of pictographical language? It is the language of the drawing, the visualization. Okay, so because you can express very deep ideas with visualization, visualization is very powerful and rich. Not just writing, it's visual, it is visual. So you can just tell lots of things, it's just one picture. So it's very valuable. But how? let me explain like this for example these uh, figures may represent very different things from in domain stories are told from an actor perspective and actors may be a person group a software system like this you can use you can use these icons uh, instead of something else according to which domain are you working on so these are uh, for example, these objects, the actors create work and exchange work objects and information work objects like documentation. So there are lots of icons, by the way, I will show you. The arrows represent the activities. This is very important because then we will use these activities to convert them into event sourcing events because these are domain events. And also there is a... Uh, annotation part okay so domain storytelling is very simple so this you have to use your imagination but this is very important to add a specific meaning to a pictographic we name it with a term from the domain language so it just facilitates the process so now we can very easily we can adapt the domain so the domain language is very important so in that situation 
for example, like this in pictographical language, you can just put the actors, put the work objects, and you can just bind them. You can just create the activities. And the most important thing is you can just communicate with the domain experts. It's very critical. And uh, I will show an example in a minute. So these are the activities. For example, someone asks for something, return for something, request for something. And also you can use your own annotation uh, for, subs for details. Okay, so uh, this there are two ways. For the first way, you can use sticky notes, is very usual. And the second approach is you can use some, a tool. I will show this tool like this. Okay, new top. And the, the address is vps.d slash modular. So in this modular, you can just drag and drop. Okay, drag and drop the icons, the pictographical things on this uh, schema. And you can just, for example, say that these people here, the, the actor sends some file to that people, for example. You can just say file. And this is, for example, a worker. And this is the team. You can just record the stories, okay, and just capture the stories and just put in a visual way. So it's then very easy to communicate with the domain experts. Also, you can download it or you can upload the previous drawings. You can do whatever you want. It's a free tool. Also, you can download it and you can just set up this tool on, on your own server. It's just the JavaScript base, but this is not the issue. So. If you don't want to use this tool, you can just use the sticky notes. It's very simple. So, yes, what are the, uh, so, okay, just we, we just saw that we can just use domain storytelling approach and we just, I show you the uh, tool and we just uh, draw the relationship actors and uh, the entities. So, it's very simple, but so the next step is we can find uh, subdomains and the bounded context and boundaries of the domains. So good scenarios are very important. So in order to catch the stories, so understand the domain, so the visualization is very important. So domain story is why it's important. You can visualize very complex domains. So after that phase, you can just uh you can just see the subdomains very easily i will show you okay uh so this is the finding the bond boundary is very important so this is uh the uh naming our turkish but not important i will just translate it there is a customer there's a sales team and there's a risk team so this is a leasing company story okay this is a little bit uh, complex the customers comes and ask for a car and the sales team just sent the customer to the risk team in order to assess the customer risk and there is a assessment process after this the sales team just return the result to the customers so this is a this is a domain okay leasing car domain so there are lots of details, but I don't want to talk all the details because the most important part is after you just draw, you visualize the process, relationship, actors, and objects, work item types with domain storytelling and with the domain experts, you can just be, you, you just begin to see the relationships, the subdomains. There's a big domain and you can just zoom in and we can just understand hand ah, this is you mean the sales domain okay hmm and after that you can see that hmm, this is risk domain risk subdomain and after that hmm, payment subdomain here like this and if you just go you can just map 
you can just easily decompose a very complex domains into subdomains very easily and correctly. Why? Because by the help of this visualization, you can just get a feedback very easily from the domain experts. And also you can zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, zoom in all the details in order to find uh, the complex domains uh, details. So this is works in a very simple and very effective uh, process. You, you can just understand what the risk team is doing. So as you can see, there are numbers, one, two, three, four. The domain experts just tell their story and you just visualize them and get feedback from them and you just make it uh, work. And if, if everyone except, oh, that's the good now or workflow, or value stream is just like that okay then you understand the domain you understand how the process is just flows after that after that you can capture the main events from this picture for example one for example there's a process for uh scoring the risk scoring and after that, the customer profile is created and just uh, saved into the risk management system. Lots of details. But the most important thing, maybe you heard Kanban or not, but we, you can just process, you can just uh, visualize the process in here. But first, you have to understand the domain and relationship. After that, you can just simplify the workflow, okay, like this and like this. Just map, just you can map the important activities and you can just map these activities onto Kanban board or just the flow means it's very simple. And after that, you understand the process, you understand the important, very, very important domain activities, domain events. So, because this, these events are very important, because after that you will use these important events into event sourcing part. So the next part is event sourcing part, and this is the value stream uh, of the risk team. Ready, get the customer information and create the risk score, assess the risk, decide approval rejected so this is how risk department is working so we understand the domain we understand the activities actor and now the other part is uh, these are the bounded contexts by the way and these uh, rectangles these gray parts are you can just decide that in that domain in that subdomain I need at least two microservices according to the reality. Because first, we understand the reality, we understand the workflow, we understand the actors and other things. And then we just see that how many microservices we need or how many subsystems we need, not microservices, maybe just big to separate system. But you can just map, you can just see from the software development uh, perspective, you can easily decide how many subsystems, how many microsystems we need. So after that, you can start writing, start integrating these microservices very easily because everything is just the map of the reality. First, we 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 just we just find the reality we understand the domains we just decompose the big complex domain into uh subdomains we just understand the domain events and now it's very easy to write this subsystem also for example the business rules assume that like that okay now the part is now we just want to write we want just we just want to start write, writing tests assume and this is the bdd test 
So the next part is if, for example, this is our test, we just integrate BDD test into the system very easily because we know the flow, we know the events, and now we just start write this business rules or just put the business rules on the right place. And as you can see, this is our business rules, but in real life, so this, this is very important. The B, so the writing BDD is a very good thing, but uh, in real life, okay, uh, for example, a various warehouse manager can say you like this a scenario. It, he gives you a scenario like this. He says that given as a warehouse manager, I need to able to print level stock, then I can order items when they're out of stock. The problem is here that the warehouse manager just gives you a solution, okay? So jumping to the solution is not a good thing. First of all, so for example, if this scenario comes to you, you have to first ask that why you want to print your stock level report. Okay, because you cannot fix everything just by typing code, okay? Maybe the process is wrong. So domain storytelling is very important. First, you have to understand the current situation. What is going on? <coughs> Sorry. If you understand the current situation well, after that, you can write better behavior-driven uh, development stories. So if you just jump to the solution, it's very dangerous, like this. This is a true, from technical point of view, it is a very good BDD scenario, but from domain perspective, it is not. It is dangerous. Why? Because you are just jumping to the solution. So as a developer, please do not write a print stock level level report. <clears throat> so you have to investigate that. Why this warehouse manager want to see stock level report? Why <clears throat> the items items out of stock? Something wrong with the process? What's going on there? So <clears throat> uh, don't jump to the solution. It's very important. So domain storytelling will help you to understand the current situation of the customer. You will understand the uh, bottlenecks. And you will see the waste. After that, you can just first uh, just understand the problem, then just create a solution for that problem. Okay, so what is the problem? The problem is, it's in Turkish, but sorry, uh, I have no time to convert them in English, but I can translate, it's very simple. So this is target condition. This is target condition. This is current condition, and the gap is problem. If there is no problem, then no improvement. So problem is very important. Okay, so uh, as we talk about domain storytelling and we just talk about Kanban and the domain events and other things. And yes, for example, this is a very effective BDD scenario with Garkin because we just, just grab the current condition. And we just now, we just see the, the current condition visually by the help of domain storytelling. And after that, we just write this BDD scenario, like here. That this is, uh, this, is, this scenario just captures this red area. Ready, get the customers, uh, 
customer information, create the risk score, assess the risk, and decide. So now we just know how to write and where this test fits the process. It's very important. And okay, so <clears throat> if you look at from a leasing car domain perspective, here are the process. So just let me remind you the whole process by yes. This is the leasing card domain. So these are the relationship and this is the process one, two, three, four. There's a story here. There's a story here and this is the story of the domain. After that, we can just capture the important, very important event activities and put it on the Kanban board. What's the meaning of the Kanban board? So it's just with the ready, then customer just agreement signed, then we calculate the risk, then we turn over the car, then we watch for the payments, then car returns, then pay, back pay, prepare for resale, and done. In the reality, in the current situation, there are currently three teams are just working on this uh, on this events. For example, risk team just calculate the risk. Sales team just they're just did dealing with the customer. They're just uh, monitoring the, if agreement is signed or not. They're just turning the car to the customer. Car returned or not. This is responsibility areas of the sales team. And repair and clean team just, they are here. In the process, they are here. So if you look at the situation from that part, just from the beginning, you can just sense that we are now at least four subsystems. So you can just start writing microservices just in that mindset. It's very simple. So in the... Reality, we have three teams, means that we just need three system, three microservices. Also, you can just divide, for example, this team needs two because one of them is scoring the risk and the other one is risk management system. So if you just sum up, you can just uh, realize that I need at least four microservices for that leasing company. So responsibilities are very clear. The responsibility areas are very clear. Events, uh, the domain events are very clear. Also, you can use these events in event sourcing for event sourcing. These are the microservices, potential one, of course. And these are the events. And it's very important as it's very important because you have to start with the customer experience and work backwards to the technology. This is the, from Steve Jobs. Yes, we just do what Steve Jobs said. Yes, we just start from the customer because in here there is a value in, in, in this flow. In this flow, there is a value for the customer. Everything is for the customer. So we just understand the domain, and after that, we just map, then we go to the technology side, we just write behavior-driven development tasks, and we just map the microservices, but this is the second part. So first, we need, um, we have to understand the problem. Don't jump to the solution, it's very important. And, uh, this is as important. Yes. Yes, I think that's all from my side. If any question, uh, I will be very happy to answer them. Any questions so far? Um, also, I'm very new in this hopping app. So I'm just clicking. Uh, 
Okay. I think there is no questions. Also, I will be around. So, any questions from now on, I can answer those questions. Thank you very much. Karen, are you there? Huh. Oh, Mar Marina. Okay. My presentation is over. Thank you very much. I think no questions so far, but if are there any question, you can find me from Twitter. Also, you can see my Twitter from the session uh, information. Any questions? Marina. Okay. Thank you very much, Marina. See you. Thank you.